In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to whip up really quick and easy round coasters. This is very similar to the square coasters that I showed you before. There's a link in the description below. In that video, I actually used a fall fabric, but my sister kind of commandeered them. Let me know in the comments if you have a sister or anyone else who likes to steal your projects, but looks great in the Hanukkah fabric as well. It's basically made out of five pieces of fabric, one for the back, four for the front. Today's tutorial, I'm going to be using the Peace on Earth fabric by My Mind's Eye, brought to you by Riley Blake Designs. They're pre-cut into five inch squares, which makes this a breeze. Then you're also going to need a four and a half inch piece of fusible fleece or batting. I'm a huge fan of pinking shears for clipping curves. It's gonna save you so much time. And then I'm just using a bowl as a template for the circle. The main requirement is it needs to be a little bit smaller than your fabric. This is four inches actually, and it ended up being the perfect size because we're gonna draw a line, we're gonna sew on that line, and then we need enough fabric still around it that we can grab our pinking shears and cut that to size. So let me show you how to get this done. And we are going to do a lined version and an unlined version. And a lot of people use it as a built-in wine glass coaster slash marker. So you just slide the wine glass in between those four layers. And if you do a variety of designs, it's gonna help people know which glass is theirs if they leave it and go wandering. So as I was thinking about doing that with the wine glasses, I started thinking, well, it's not so cute with the fusible fleece in there, so maybe we should make them lined. So I did try one where I put lining on the inside too. That makes it use an extra piece of fabric. So you would use six of the squares instead of five. And it's a little bit thicker, a little bit harder to cut with the pinking shears, but totally doable and a little bit more finished. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick our fabrics. To make a great coaster, it's best to use like two darks and two lights so that you can see the difference. So that's gonna be the back. These are gonna be the four for the front. That's gonna be the back. These are gonna be the four for the front. Now I've taken the fabrics that I'm gonna use for the back and I've taken them off of the ironing board. Now we're gonna take the eight other pieces, so four for each coaster, and we are simply going to fold them in half and press. Now when you're pressing something really directional like these birds, you can decide if you're gonna want them to be going up and down or sideways. Sometimes I make this decision by looking at both of them folded to see which one actually has a decent piece in one of the quarters. So it's kind of like that's gonna show or that's gonna show or like that's gonna show, especially once you cut off that circle. So if that's a half, kind of say, I'll do that. Just have that bird head. So I'm gonna press it that way. When you have a pattern more like a stripe or a snowflake, there's less thinking involved. Okay, now we're going to press the fusible fleece, the fusible part onto the wrong side of your back fabric. I'm just gonna follow the manufacturer's instructions on that. We're going to take our bowl and place it in the center of the fleece. And then you can take any kind of a pen, you can use heat erasable pen or regular pen because you will never see this again, and you're just going to trace around your bowl. So now we have our sewing line. Now I'm gonna take some fabric clips and we're gonna organize these and get them ready for sewing. So for the one that is going to be unlined, we are going to take the fusible fleece down, the backing fabric face up, and then we are going to organize these four pieces around the square, making sure the folded side is on the inside. And also making sure we have the light colors and the dark colors in opposite corners. So you're gonna put the first three down and you're gonna be like, uh-oh, two light ones are together there, Tara. But remember, these are two. So now we need to overlap this. So you do that and then you fold that one back, place that under. You wanna make sure all of your folds again are on the inside, have all of these edges together. Now I'm going to do clips, and you might notice I'm putting them upside down. They're flat on one side to go along your, your sewing machine and curved on the other side. But because we're gonna be sewing from the back where we drew the circle, 
when I put them on here, it looks like I'm doing them upside down, but it's gonna be perfect when we take it to the sewing machine. And so I just wanna make sure I have each of these sections clipped where these fabrics overlap. So we're gonna take it and we're going to sew around that circle. But first, let's get our lined one set up. To do a lined circle coaster where it has fabric in here and not the fleece or batting showing, you're going to need six pieces of fabric. So we have pressed the four, pressed the fleece onto the back of this one, and now we are going to take another full square. We're going to put it right side up. So the wrong side of the fabric is against the fleece. You gotta pay attention when you're putting this down. You wanna get your bowl pretty well centered because we need to have room to use our pinking shears and cut around this circle once we sew it together on the line that I'm drawing for the second time. And in this instance, you do want to use a heat erasable pen or a chalk line because this is on the outside of the fabric, so it might show. Now I'm gonna turn that over so that the line is down. Now I'm going to organize these four fabrics just like we did on this one that's just gonna have fleece. If you wanna be really particular about what is in each quadrant of your coaster, you can set it up to look like the front. Usually when you lay these down, you're, so, you're seeing the back as you lay them down, which doesn't matter at all when you're doing patterns like this. But when you get into more specific things like, oh, do I want this bird or this fern showing? Or do I like this bird head? Or do I really want just a bird tail? That's answer is no to that. So I'm going to lay this out so that we're looking at the front. So we want this to be the top of the coaster. So that means that we're going to then put these fabrics right on top of there. And then just so I can make sure I clip the exact right parts, I'm gonna turn that over really carefully. Make sure that's all lined up, flipping and clipping it. Flip and clip. Okay, so make sure that's all nice and flat. So now we're gonna to go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew these two circles. Because this is a curve, a pretty, you know, pretty small circle, four inch circle, and we want it to turn and be as round as possible when we press it, you want to use a small stitch length. So I'm gonna actually use a 1.8. That's going to give us more points to the curve so that when we clip this with the pinking shears and turn it, it's going to give us the best shape possible. And I'm sewing right on the line, not, not a quarter inch from the line, just right on that line. I also don't sew too quickly when I'm doing a circle like this because often if you go a little too quickly, you're less likely to have a really smooth curve, which is going to affect how it flips and presses in the end. I moved the ironing board for a moment because things are about to get a little bit linty. I'm gonna take my pinking shears and I'm going to cut around the circle through all of the layers, making sure I do not cut that stitch line. Now this is a lot easier to do on the five layers than on the six, but it's doable on both. So what I have discovered is you wanna keep your cutting to the back half of your pinking shears when you're cutting through this many layers. Cause here's what happens. If you try and go too far forward, it just bends right in your scissors. Then you gotta ratchet them up. So you really need to use your back teeth. And these are pretty new scissors. So it's not that I've been using these for years and they're getting dull. I think it really just has to do with the thickness of the fabric once you get to those front teeth. But knowing that you only wanna cut about halfway definitely saves you some folded fabric. Now you can see this one, we're gonna have to cut a lot more because you can't go even as far as you could on the other one. This is my favorite way of clipping curves for projects. The other way would be to take scissors, cut about a quarter inch, and then do a bunch of little cuts, making sure that you haven't hit the fabric. To me, that's a lot harder on my thumb. And if you've been sewing for long, you know that that is often a problem area for people who sew for years and years as you end up with carpal tunnel. So you wanna use as many things that are good for your hands and having something squeezing like this versus that other thing repetitively is a lot easier on your tendon. So you just take your time and get around this circle. Now we have those both cut and we're gonna turn them over 
and then we're just going to flip them right side out. As you're flipping this and getting that curve, you wanna make sure you're getting your finger all the way in because sometimes there's two layers, like right here, there's two layers of fabric. Before you hit that fleece, you wanna make sure you're pushing that seam out at the fleece layer and not at one of the folded fabric layers. That's gonna give you your best circle. And I just rub along that seam with my finger for this size and this shape, that works great. You can use a turning tool as well, but look at how great that is. And then I just kind of jiggle the, the seams with my fingers to get them out and we have a nice circle. So we'll do it with this one. Then we're gonna get that ironing board back. We're gonna iron them and these are gonna be done. See how easy that was to put together. So you could whip up a bunch of these if you're having a dinner party. These make great stocking stuffers, gifts for teachers, neighbors. These are also great to sew and sell. You could wrap them up in sets of four or six, and sell them at craft fairs. Obviously good for all year, depending on what fabric you use. So now I have my wine glass and I just need somebody to bring me a bottle. I think I'm in the mood for a Merlot.